Giuseppe, thank you for having us in this wonderful factory of Montegrappa. Thank you. It's a um, great pleasure. I'm really, really, very, very honored to be here uh, and to see how a Montegrappa pen is made. Um, before we start the interview, I always do a pen check before, so I was wondering which pen do you have with you today? Well, I have uh, my Extra 1930, mm -hmm. which is a classic of Monte Grappa, it's a design uh, that was made for the first time in 1930, as the name yeah. suggests, <laughs> and uh, we're still making today in celluloid and sterling silver. Mm -hmm. And recently it's also available in its uh, customizable form on the configurator. Mm -hmm. But this is a very simple version in uh, black and white celluloid. And what nib do you have on it? What nib size? Uh, well, right now, because I actually have four or five of these on my desk, <laughs> uh, this is a, a medium, but okay. uh, I use different uh, colors of ink for each mm. nib size. Okay. So, so I would normally use a medium, fine, broad, with different colors. Okay. Um, so let's start with the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, Monte Grappa it has a large history, of course, because it goes uh, way back. Can you give us a brief history lesson about Monte Grappa? So Monte Grappa started uh, in 1912 in this very building mm -hmm. uh, that was formerly uh, a power plant. And you know, we are uh, still in, uh, very close to the center of Bassano del Grappa, and we are by the river Brenda. And this is also a very important historical location uh, because we are just by a villa called Villa Caerizzo uh, that during the First World War was the headquarter for the American Red Cross and uh, a great American writer like um, Ernest Hemingway and John Dos Passos actually lived in this villa and were ambulance driver for the Red Cross. Um, the name itself of the company uh, comes from uh, the name of a mountain, so Monte Grappa means Mount Grappa, mm -hmm. which is in the backdrop of our factory, and that during the First World War uh, was actually a location of very uh, important battles mm -hmm. uh, that uh, actually brought then to uh, um, the Italian army to stop the invasion. Uh, and uh, for such a, an achievement, Monte Grappa, the mountain, became a symbol of Italian uh, patriotism. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a heroic symbol. And, uh, and in fact, still today, in uh, most Italian cities, you have a street dedicated to Monte Grappa. The, the, the name became so important and symbolic uh, that even the city itself, Bassano, that at that time was called Bassano Veneto, changed its name to Bassano del Grappa. And the company name it's itself originally was not Monte Grappa, but was Elmo, changed the name to Elmo Monte Grappa. And then eventually the Elmo part dropped and just Monte Grappa stayed. So when uh, the company was established, uh, it was originally making uh, fountain pen nibs in mm -hmm. solid gold. Only nibs. Only nibs. Uh, in fact, there was a company uh, that uh, basically was uh, run by one of the founders, who was an Austrian lady, her name was Edwidge Hoffman, mm -hmm. that was originated even before 1912. Okay. Um, so uh, we uh, are certain that actually this lady, uh, along with Heinrich Helm, who was the uh, head of production, they were already making nibs even before. So in 1912 they joined forces with uh, Alessandro Marzotto, who was mm -hmm. the original founder, and they decided together to make the first Italian pen so Actually, the history goes further back it's, than... It, it goes actually okay. further back. You have to think that historically and geographically, uh, Monte Grappa and Bassano del Grappa was really located close to the border with Austria. So the border mm -hmm. with Austria was only 16 kilometers away. Yeah. So it was very normal, you know, that there would be you know, yeah. collaboration <laughs> of course. Uh, between the two countries. Then, of course, the war made it complicated. <laughs> for everyone. But uh, um, talking about war as well, Montegrappa is one of the few, certainly local companies, but um, in general in Italy, I would say, industrial companies that uh, uh, never stopped making their product, their core mm -hmm. product, even throughout the First and the Second World War. Okay. Because all the industrial company at that time, they were converted into factory to make weapons, yeah. make bullets. Uh, 
but Monte Carpa stayed with the pen. Stayed with the pen. Another kind of weapon. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, uh, yes. Uh, he, he, just because, of course, the pens were needed uh, by the soldiers, by the army, yeah. to communicate with, with the families with and others. with one another. And so it was the most important tool of communication at that time. Uh, and the company continued without interruption, not even for one day, making pens. <laughs> um, and uh, it is true, I mean, even to today, to throughout the history and until now, the company is always at continuity, whereas many other brands, you know, they've have been interrupted, resurrected, or uh, Ponte Grappa has always been, always been making, making pens. Um, so, uh, where does my family come into the picture? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my because you're the great-grandson. Yes. Of the founder, right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, my, uh, I'm not uh, the uh, great grandson of, of the founder, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, the grandson of Leopoldo Tullio Aquila, yeah. <laughs> who uh, started the collaboration with Montegrap in 1938. Okay. So it was a bit later. Okay. So my grandfather uh, came to Marzotto, who was the founder of the company, and uh, asked him to make private label spend for him. Because my, my grandfather uh, was a chemist by studies, uh, he was making his own inks and papers, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he was very passionate uh, about pens. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have the technology to make pens. So when he started his own stationary business, he came to Bassano and uh, asked Marzotto to produce a line of pens with his name, my mm -hmm. family name, which is Aquila. So that's where it all started. They all started from my family <laughs> side. Family. Then, uh, over the years, uh, he became the number one client. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few years later, then, uh, when my father joined the business, he bought the company. Mm -hmm. And uh, he bought the company also because the Marzotto uh, people, I mean, uh, uh, the, the Alessandro, did not have children to continue the business. Okay. So basically, it was an opportunity then for my father as the main client of the mm -hmm. company to buy the business. Uh, I joined, of course, uh, for mm -hmm. obvious reasons uh, much later. Uh, I how, how was it for you uh, to, to grow up in a, in a family business like this? Well, I mean, uh, we also discussed this uh, during, yeah. <laughs> during lunch. Uh, in Italian families, when you have a family business, mm -hmm. uh, let's say a few generations back, already from my generation, you had to continue the family mm -hmm. tradition. There's no option. <laughs> you can do uh, something else. Uh, but I've done it willingly in the sense I've always uh, uh, loved pens. Mm -hmm. I've always used pens. I mean, I've always written with fountain pens. Uh, and I grew up in, uh, in this kind of environment. So uh, even, you know, during a school break uh, or whatever, I would go to the factory and my parents would just keep me busy by you know, working on uh, put cartridges, put packing cartridges, or putting springs on ballpoint and refills. There's always something to do for you. Yes, there's always something to do and something related to, to the business. So I was always fascinated, you know, with this machine making these little components. And, and, uh, and therefore, for me, it was just a natural consequence. Yeah. Uh, my studies were completely different. I mean, I... Um, I started um, doing a humanistic study, so Latin, Greek, and uh, uh, totally store history. And but then uh, uh, it became experimental, uh, the computer science uh, mm -hmm. in school that I was attending. So I changed completely to computer science, and then eventually graduated in business administration. So the whole mix <laughs> so, uh, that has nothing to do, or maybe you know, has a little bit uh, to do with everything that uh, I still do today. Uh, even though the, the part that I like the most in, in my activity is actually the creative part of mm -hmm. uh, new product development. Yeah, because uh, the ideas uh, mostly come from you. Um, do you get your inspirations from your hobbies, for example, because you mentioned that you like to swim? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, inspiration comes from everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been uh, lucky enough to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so uh, a lot of inspiration has come from my travels, okay. I would say. Um, so, I mean, uh, earlier on I showed you Samurai. Yeah. Samurai came from frequent trips to Japan. Uh, 
I I've traveled several times to mm-hmm. Japan. That is a country that I love. I'm very fascinated by it. And so that was actually the inspiration for Samurai. I mm-hmm. visited different museums where you know they're showing all the artifacts and the armor of mm-hmm. Samurai. I was really fascinated and so the Samurai was really your idea and yes and uh, yeah I mean it was uh, it worked out perfectly. quite interesting uh, because when I spoke then with our designer and uh, engineers about my idea for the Samurai they mm-hmm. thought I was crazy you know it's like <laughs> Because this is like an action figure yeah. itself and something that's never been done and uh, and uh, therefore it posed some challenges and also, uh, you know, some of our uh, team members, they say, how oh, is it possible, how would people, uh, you know, what would be the reaction about mm-hmm. this, uh, this Yeah, but that's of course as with a lot of designs, I can imagine. Yes, yes, and yeah, this, it happens a lot, you know, but, uh, uh, but Monte Grappa is not afraid... Uh, to, to dare, you know, mm-hmm. it's not, uh, I mean, we, um, I, yeah, I, you, you I like... made some really extraordinary limiteds. Yes, and we are not afraid, we know that some, that our designs uh, are not necessary for everybody. Mm-hmm. And we like to generate this love and hate uh, feeling, you yeah. know, we discussed also earlier. Um, so, you might really totally dislike <laughs> a design or love it and 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 in fact i know for a fact out of an experience you know of many years in the industry that when we get a, a reaction to a design that everybody is okay about it mm-hmm. it will not work <laughs> yeah. commercially but when we get this uh, love and date uh, reaction yeah. we know that's going to be a success also because we we are a niche brand we are, uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's not definitely, unfortunately, possible for everyone uh, to, to buy our, our pens. And, and again, our design uh, and our limited edition, they're made in such small quantities that, that there will be always, you know, a niche mm-hmm. of, pe- of people that are going to love. What's uh, a design that, design. Uh, that, that had a lot of that hate, love? Uh, feeling well, one one of them uh, is probably one of the most successful in the, in the last uh, decade, I would say, which is the Chaos Pen. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- this was designed by Sylvester Stallone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sylvester Stallone is also a shareholder in the Monte Grappa business, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, a person, a friend that I know since 1995. So uh, he is a he is a pen collector uh, and a Monte Grappa collector, uh, and it was funny the way that the pen was uh, originated as well. You know, we were uh, in Venice together. It was uh, during the Venice Film Festival, mm-hmm. and we were having dinner. This was a dinner after he was awarded uh, um, actually a prize for his career mm-hmm. uh, a few years ago. It was probably two thousand eight, two thousand nine. And um, and so we were having dinner together, and uh, and I asked him Sly, so if you had to design a pen, how how would you see this pen? So uh, uh, we were seated, uh, you know, next to each other, and he took a napkin and he put it on the table, and uh, I gave him my pen, and he started to sketch the pen on the napkin, mm. like so. I said, oh, skulls and lizard and snakes, and and he started actually to sketch, and he's quite good because he's a painter. Yeah, okay. He's been painting for really more than 30 years, probably 40 years now. He's very creative. Of course, he is an abstract painter, mm-hmm. but he has a good sense of, of forms mm-hmm. and harmony. And, uh, and he sketched the pen on a napkin. Uh, and, uh, and I loved it. And he was very much into skulls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he also we could had see a that. tattoo, you know, okay. that he had that done recently, a tattoo of a skull on his shoulder. And uh, and then at that time he was uh, he had just finished uh, shooting uh, the Expendable mm-hmm. and was about to start Expendable Two. So in fact, you know, we developed the pen, and then the pen was used also in, 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 the, the, movie, movie, yes. in the movie. Yes. So yeah, I think we all saw that. <laughs> yeah. So so and and so this the reaction to to this pen has been uh, phenomenal. I mean, uh, a lot of press, you know, mm-hmm. was. Uh, done on the pen all over the world of course you know you have lo- people who love it people who hate it mm-hmm. uh, lots of haters yeah. but, uh, but uh, actually I 
uh, evaluate the success of uh, any project when you have the more haters you have and the more successful the project is going to be. There was, there was something funny which I remember, uh, really funny. There was a, uh, a TV show in Hollywood, yeah. there is a local TV in Los Angeles. Uh, that they talked about the pen, yeah. and they made this, a clip that probably you can still find on YouTube, and it was beautiful, and uh, they were making nasty comments about, yeah. uh, uh, let's say, the taste mm -hmm. of the pen, <laughs> and the design in particular about Sylvester Stallone and his career <laughs> and things like that, and then they, in the end they said, uh, Chaos pen, the worst thing happened to Italy since Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this was. Uh, that, that's a nice compliment, I think. Yeah, was uh, hilarious, if yeah. I say so. Uh, but I have to say that this pen was a super phenomenal success and mm -hmm. uh, sold out quickly. So you see, indeed, so, that such an extraordinary pen. Yeah. Love it or hate it, but at the end, in the end, you know, it's a success. Uh, it's a success. So uh, we have had this kind of reaction. I mean, maybe not so extreme, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, many times. Yeah, uh, but uh, but again, I mean, uh, since a, a large part of our business is on limited editions, mm -hmm. which are basically made for collectors, collectors are looking for something different, for something special. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something which is, doesn't have to be necessarily too conventional, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and this is where Monte Grappa probably <laughs> proves to be strong. Yeah. In a unique selling point. Yeah. Uh, I have a question from uh, our social media followers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of it is: What is the most interesting about fountain pens for you? Well, the most interesting about fountain pens, I've been a fountain pen user since uh, my childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, we would use fountain pens at school. Uh, I like to have my hands dirty. Now, strangely <laughs> enough, today is not dirty. <laughs> uh, but um, it, it's, it's a ritual. It's, all, it's, all, mm -hmm. it's a ritual, I think, uh, writing with it, uh, with a fountain pen. Uh, I, I only use fountain pens. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though we may make ballpoints and rollables and markers and all mm -hmm. stuff and pencils, but uh, even and even though I travel a lot, and you know that traveling on a plane maybe is not always the best. Uh, uh, yeah, you had some accidents way. in the past. Uh, let's say that you know, even though you have some problems with leaking, but you know, if the cap is tight, uh, there's no it issue. Be okay. But normally, when I leave, I always make sure that the pen is fully. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, so filled, loaded, so that there's no air mm -hmm. and no problem. But then, when you travel, you write, yeah. <laughs> and, and then at some point <laughs> you can goes wrong. experience. Uh, but but then normally, I mean, the, the pen is closed and there is no uh, possibility for for leakage. Of course, I I clean it when I arrive if there is any mm -hmm. any issue. But um, but that's part of the ritual. That's part of the beauty. Uh, and I, I find myself that when I write with a fountain pen, uh, it helps me remembering, of course, when I write. I take a lot of lots of notes, you know, all the time. Uh, and I hardly ever have to go back and inspect my notes because again. Because you remember, because, because you wrote Because it I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I also use different colors when I write, because, you know, I want to <laughs> into eight things, you know, I have fun uh, with that. <clears throat> And, and, and again, I also uh, write a journal, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I see that also when I write a journal, even the quality of my writing improves because of using a fountain pen, because uh, you, you not naturally take more time mm -hmm. to think and more time to write as mm -hmm. well. And, uh, and so this is, I think, uh, these are some of the advantages of using a fountain pen, because mm -hmm. you are more reflective, and even your uh, handwriting would be more Improved. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. yes. um, Montegrappa did a lot of corporations, it licensed, uh, like the Game of Thrones pen. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the uh, license that you're the most proud of? Which pen, which corporation? Well, the Game of Thrones is certainly uh, a collaboration I'm proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this generated some kind of uh, reaction, positive or mm -hmm. negative, I mean, of course. because uh, of course, I mean, not everybody understands the relationship yeah. between a pen or Game of Thrones. Uh, but commercially, this was a very successful uh, yeah. uh, collaboration. Uh, at any 
price level uh, for the products because you know we have uh, the open edition uh, uh, with the different families and mm -hmm. then we have two limited editions mm -hmm. and uh, this limited edition are also available in gold with a very uh, high price point and we've sold pens you know really expensive pens with the game on the <laughs> <Trump's Yeah. laughs> name so uh, I was personally even surprised myself about the success because mm -hmm. this went beyond uh, any possible expectation. Uh, of course, this is a successful collaboration, but there's a number of other collaboration I'm proud of. Uh, one of them, for example, was with uh, Mohamed Ali, mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when we introduced our Mohamed Ali part of the Icons series. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, let's say, cherish and treasure this uh, uh, collection uh, a lot because it gave me a chance to meet personally mm -hmm. Mohamed Ali. And, and this was uh, this is a memory that I will keep uh, for for a long time, for a long time. Uh, likewise, another collection uh, I'm very proud of uh, was a collaboration made with the Vatican in mm -hmm. in the year 2000. That was the year of uh, the jubileum of the Catholic Church, and uh, we made a project. Uh, uh, there was a pen uh, that was engraved with the image of Pope John mm -hmm. Paul II uh, and his signature, and it was linked to a big charity. Mm -hmm. So we actually raised a lot of money uh, for a foundation helping uh, Brazilian children. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. So for each pen yeah. we raised uh, 500,000 lira, which was 250 euro, mm -hmm. but we saw 2,000 pens, so it was a billion, which is half a million, half a million euro. Wow, amazing. In, yes, and this all went for, for this charity. We've been involved in a number of uh, projects linked to charity. Uh, in fact, we've sold the most expensive pen in the world in the charity auction in China. Mm -hmm. uh, it was 2010 and the pen was sold for 6.3 million euro. Wow. So, but it was for a good cause. So. Yes. So the pen was actually donated and, okay. uh, and all the proceeds were went to, to charity. Wow. Uh, we do this on a regular basis. I mean, uh, we provide really pens mm -hmm. uh, that are auctioned for a number of different uh, charity activities, uh, uh, in particular we, we have teamed up with Eva Longoria on a number of mm -hmm. uh, uh, events that she's done in the past, you know, giving uh, some pens and also even our Chaos Watch, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that was auctioned. So, um, this is activities that we're very proud to Yeah, do. I understand. I yes. understand. Um, I have another question uh, about the designs. Uh, some of the limited editions, the artisan editions, uh, are really extraordinary. Um, they're almost like art pieces. Um, uh, how far is the, is the writing experience still uh, important for a writing instrument? At, uh, if you know what I mean. I understand exactly <laughs> what you mean. I have to say, you know, uh, the um, uh, habits uh, of the trend of collecting, mm -hmm. okay, was really hot in the 90s, mm -hmm. okay, and that's when basically uh, in in the in the late 90s. So I, I joined the business uh, as I mentioned 1992, and I was the one who actually created the first Monte Grappa limited edition. Uh, since then, this became a tradition, and many other brands, you know, they went into the limited edition mm -hmm. uh, markets. Uh, so uh, at that time, collecting. Uh, didn't mean using the pens. So mm -hmm. collectors would buy just to keep the pens in a vitrine or mm -hmm. in a drawer. Look at it, treasure them. Yes, but uh, most of them would not even ink the pen mm -hmm. because they were feeling that even the value, you know, would mm -hmm. sort of uh, diminish if they use the pens. Uh, today, uh, this has changed, and I'm very happy for that mm -hmm. because people, even with limited edition, people like to use them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that means a pen has to write and has to write well. A pen has to be designed so that it's balanced and you can use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is true for all our pens. Uh, they have to write. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and well, <laughs> uh, balance can be hard on a pen like Samurai. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> But okay, or with a pen full yeah. of diamonds, it will be difficult. That that is something else. But mm. let's say that every every pen that we design, I would say ninety nine percent of our pens have to post mm -hmm. as well. You know, yeah. so they're designed to post. Uh, even though I mean, most people they sh 
they don't post, you know, the, the camp mm -hmm. when they write. But uh, but we are That's traditional, traditional, uh, you know, pen people, and so we um, still make our pens in a way that they, they are fit to daily use. Yeah. Um, so if you have the complete freedom mm -hmm. to create without a license uh, problem or anything, uh, because you make a lot of team pens, like the, for Queen, for example, now, uh, for which group or person or whatever would you like to create a pen? Well, you know, um, I have to say that uh, whenever we approach any any design or idea, without it, we do it without restrictions. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, when you uh, do a collaboration with a third party, or there is a licensor involved, you need to abide by the rules, you know, mm -hmm. and the guidelines that uh, that they give you. But um, I have to say that for most Montegrappa pens that do not involve a collaboration, they, they are done without any restrictions. So okay. they already are the expression of, uh, in a way, my way of thinking and my uh, creativity and my uh, vision of beauty. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very lucky, you know, that I have this opportunity to, <laughs> to uh, come up with uh, with the ideas that, again, at times they can be uh, very different than uh, what other brands mm -hmm. are doing. Um, th there is also an area where uh, you can have a lot of fun is in uh, in uh, in the one of a kind creations mm -hmm. uh, that uh, most people are not aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you know, oh, I mean, you, you were walking to the factory and you saw that there is a particular mm -hmm. pen that is being made. But we we make uh, on a regular basis uh, kind of extraordinary writing instruments, which are one of a kind that people mm -hmm. don't know about it, and the people will never know about it because Just they will special, never see them. Special requests from clients. yes, so so and we do this a lot mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, what kind of special requests do you get? We get uh, requests of all, <laughs> all different kinds. Uh, we discussed earlier mm -hmm. the, for the bespoke, you know, people want, you know, the image Sport of their, their dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, uh, but not, not, not only that, you know, so, so there is a, all sorts of uh, different ideas. People, you know, they want their production of their tattoo on the pen mm, okay, or yeah. uh, all sorts of, uh, of ideas or they want their idol, you know, uh, put on the pen in a special way or uh, all different shapes, idea, different materials, combination of materials mm -hmm. together. And uh, uh, so it's really uh, kind of interesting. Mm. And Montegrappa, uh, we, I mean, we, we have a, let's say, division of, of our company, a group of our craftsmen that are uh, working exclusively in this particular area. Uh, and this is fun as well, because this is a lot of fun. So we we worked for royalty, you know, for kings and queens, mm -hmm. and you can see a lot of, lots of pictures in this room, you know, and um, for celebrities from Hollywood, you know, uh, for footballers and, you know, musicians. Uh, what was the most strange request that you, that you get? Well, I cannot speak of uh, some of the requests <laughs> okay. because it would not be fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, we have also confidentiality issues. Yes, of uh, course. Uh, in in some cases, but but, but uh, we we've had some kind of fun uh, uh, requests. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, you see on on the wall there. Uh, you know, we have a pen made for Sasha Baron Cohen, the guy, yes. the dictator. Yeah. Uh, where, of course, we reproduce the image of the dictator on the, uh, on the pen. Okay. So the, the, that's uh, yeah, really, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, all sorts of uh, different requests. Um, uh, you know, we, we have uh, also supplied pen to. Kings, I mean, as I mentioned, or dicta real dictators. I mean, Fidel Castro, mm -hmm. you see a picture there, is, was actually collecting our pens. And we, the cigar pen that we made in 1997, we actually the first uh, pen was made for him okay. with a big diamond on it. Uh, and if you still go today to the State Museum in Havana, they display some of his pens, which are our pens, yeah. you know, in, uh, in this museum. So, How is it for you to see uh, your pens? Yeah, it's, it's very uh, rewarding for me because uh, 
uh, every time I see one of our pens in the pocket of someone, I mean, of anyone, uh, it's really rewarding. You it know, makes you proud. It uh, will make me feel proud. Mm. Uh, for example, there is a museum in uh, Ekaterinburg, which is a city in Russia. Uh, that's the city where Boris uh, Yeltsin uh, was born. Mm -hmm. uh, and now in, in, in the museum, right next to the, um, you know, the nuclear uh, suitcase, you know, mm -hmm. the one that you had the bottom to yeah, throw yeah, yeah. the <laughs> nuke. Uh, next to it, there's actually one pen, a uh, yeah. Monte Grappa pen, that was used by Boris on a daily, day-to-day uh, day -day use. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, there is history in Russia, because when Boris Yeltsin handed over the power to Putin, he did it with a Montegrappa dragon okay. pen. And this is a pen that uh, Putin still keeps and uses. Uh, yes, of course, because uh, it's a special Yeltsin. moment for him as well. Moment. So, so, so our pens are really tied to very important, you know, moments of the history, signing some important documents. Uh, for example, um, two years ago, uh, Montegrappa was the pen of the G7 in Taormina, mm -hmm. and uh, and so all the heads of states, I mean, starting from Trump and uh, Theresa May or mm -hmm. Macron, uh, you know, or the Italian prime minister uh, or the Japanese prime minister, they all signed very important documents with so they all wrote with pen. the pen. Yes, and, uh, and, and you know, and this, uh, uh, we have really a huge group of people. I mean, we, are, we have our world of fame, but it's a very, it's a fraction of, yeah, of the course. celebrities and personalities that use our mm. pens. Um, we talk a lot about the history. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the future? What do you think of the future of the fountain pens? Well, With all the digital uh, computers yes. and everything. Well, I uh, I can tell you that the fountain pen is actually uh, living uh, probably one of the healthiest period in, in its history mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we're seeing actually sales of fountain pens skyrocketing I mean growing in this last year double digit every year uh, and for us I mean for Monte Grappa fountain pens represent almost 60% of our business mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm very confident uh, about the future uh, uh, in spite of the digitalization because actually people need now more than before, something, you know, uh, to detox from digitalization. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so they need to rediscover the old values. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is what's basically happening now. I mean, it's not just people of my generation, but even millennials I mean, that have these needs even more mm -hmm. so. So so I'm very confident about the future for fountain pens, especially. Um, is there something coming up in the future that you want to share with us? Some new products, something special, something... Well, yes, I can share a few things with you. Uh, well, you, you know that we have just introduced our Queen yeah. pen, yeah. so that is in collaboration with uh, the mm -hmm. Rock the rock Band, uh, which I'm a huge fan <laughs> of. Uh, uh, so the next product that we're going to introduce after Queen this year uh, is in a completely different direction. <laughs> uh, so actually, it's inspired more from from the past. Okay. So it's uh, actually a replica of a vintage Monte Grappa uh, mm -hmm. from 1912, from the very beginning. And you know, in those days, you had uh, a safety pen, so mm -hmm. pens with retractable nibs, and uh, the filling system was eyedropper. Mm -hmm. So we are going to introduce uh, uh, a pen called Mia Carissima, mm -hmm. Ebonite. Uh, so it's made of Ebonite. It will be available in three different colors of Ebonite uh, and will be with, uh, with eyedropper uh, filling. It's, uh, let's say, a variation of the eyedropper filling uh, that we have uh, implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a modern eyedropper yeah, filling, so it's... Uh, which is less messy than uh, the original. <laughs> Uh, way and also it's made to, to last because mm -hmm. you know the original eyedropper they had a sack of rubber inside as a reservoir this one uh, has a more modern approach <laughs> uh, so it's made to, to, to be durable uh, but uh, in the uh, outer design is really a replica of, of a vintage of a vintage pen and it comes also in, in a beautiful packaging and this will be introduced the first one will be introduced uh, in September okay 
well, that's uh, really close by. Yeah. Uh, Giuseppe, I really want to thank you for your time, uh, for your openness, for uh, the factory tour, for, uh, for everything here. Uh, I have a small gift from the Netherlands for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's a little bit smaller than the Monte Grappa cup over there, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Thanks, I hope to see a lot of uh, new Monte Grappa pens in the near future and a lot of excitement uh, collaborations. I also know you have a, you have a small gift for our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. This beautiful Monte Grappa Neuruna pen. Um, you can win this by uh, uh, subscribing to the channel, follow Monte Grappa on social media and let us know what you think about Monte Grappa in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching and good luck. Thank you.